Welcome to today's medical billing session at LNAT. In this video, we are going to be looking into an overview of healthcare electronic transactions or healthcare EDI transactions. Have you ever wondered how an electronic claim will look like? Do we have boxes and data fields in electronic claims like what we have on a paper claim? What is 835? What is 837? What is 277? This session will answer all these. Before we continue, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel or if you are a new visitor to our channel, please subscribe it right now and click on the bell button. This would help me to monetize my channel and to continue creating videos for you. Okay, so what is a healthcare EDI transaction? It's simply an exchange of healthcare data between two parties, a transmission of data from one to another. Here is a definition found on CMS. It's an electronic exchange of information between two parties to carry out financial or administrative activities related to healthcare. For example, a provider submitting an electronic claim to an insurance company or an insurance company sending an electronic remittance to a provider. When a provider sends an electronic claim or an insurance company sends an electronic remittance, is there any standard format that they have to use? Yes, of course. All HIPAA covered entities, health plans, healthcare clearing houses, and healthcare providers, these are the HIPAA covered entities. Remember, health plans, healthcare clearing houses, and healthcare providers are HIPAA covered entities. If you are a third party billing company to a provider, you are not a covered entity. But we are not going to discuss why and how third party billing companies are regulated or controlled because this will not fit the scope of this video. We will go back to EDI. The US Department of Health and Human Services has adopted certain standards for healthcare EDI transactions. When HIPAA covered entities conduct a healthcare EDI transaction, they must use any of the HHS adopted standards from ASCX12. ASC is Accredited Standards Committee. It's an organization certified by ANC, the American National Standards Institute. ASC is the one who develops standard communication protocols for EDI. It's not only for healthcare, but they create protocols for almost all electronic transactions like banking, shipment, logistics and all these. Now let's look into some of the important healthcare EDI transactions. Transaction Standard 270 Health Plan Eligibility Benefit Inquiry This format is used to inquire eligibility and benefit information about a health plan enrollee or member of a health plan. And 271 format is used by health plans to respond back to the inquiry. We'll see an example here. Let's say I'm an end user and I want to check coverage status for a patient. I submit an eligibility inquiry on Avail ED or Change Health portal. Remember Avail ED or Change Health being healthcare clearing houses, they are HIPAA covered entities as we have already seen. They will collect the required information such as the patient's name, date of birth, insurance ID, convert the data into 270 standard request and they will send it to the insurance. Now insurance will send back the coverage information in 271 format. Our clearinghouse system will decode the 271 and will serve as the eligibility information in a human readable format. Here is a sample EDI file. An EDI file is simply a text file. Here we are seeing the data line by line, but in real EDI file there will be no garage written. It will be a continuous text with no line breakup. EDI file consists of segments and data elements. Each line here represents a segment. The first two or three letters code represents a segment identifier. See here the ST, BHT, HL, these are segment identifiers. Usually the segments are separated using a tilde at the end. Let's look at the first segment here. This is ST transaction set segment. So we have two data elements in this segment. This is the first element 270 and this is the second element 1234. As you can see here data elements are separated using asterisks. Now we know segments and data elements. We also have loops in EDI file. Loops are used to keep related segments together. See this example here. This is just an illustration, it cannot be expected to match any EDI standard. Okay, so in the first loop, we have two segments, one for patient name and one for patient address. The patient name segment has two data elements, first name and last name. And the second segment has one, two, three, four, five, six data elements. 
Since these two segments are related to patient information, we have grouped them into one loop. And second loop has insurance information, insurance name and address in two segments. All right, now we are aware that loops, segments and data elements are the structural components of an EDI file. Let's see a summary of other healthcare EDI transactions. 270, we have already seen this. It's the eligibility request that we sent to health plan and 271 is a response from health plan for our 270 request. Now let's see 276, healthcare claim status inquiry. The standard is used to request claim status from the insurance plan. When insurance sends response, they will use 277 format. Remember 277 is only a claim status, it's not a remittance advice, it's just a claim status report. You may wonder if you haven't ever used 276 to get claim status. This is because even though healthcare providers are also HIPAA covered entities, usually they are not directly handling these transaction standards to deal with an insurance. In reality, these transactions are actually happening between the clearing houses and the insurance companies. The providers are utilizing their clearing houses for all these purposes. So don't worry about using 276, your clearing house will take care of it if you have one. Okay, so next is 278, Referral Certification and Authorization. This transaction standard is used to request referrals and authorizations from the insurance. And for response also, we use the same standard. Now 834, Health Plan Enrollment and Disenrollment. 834 is used by employees and sponsors. Employees can send their employees information to the insurance plan using this X12 standard to get their employees enrolled or disenrolled from insurance coverage. Note that the individuals cannot use a standard 834 to enroll into an insurance plan. Next 835 electronic remittance advice. This is used by health plans to send payment order to the provider's bank or to send remittance advice to the provider. It's used for both EFT and ERA. The last one is 837, healthcare claim. This is used for electronic claim submission. But we can also include other payer payment information in case if we are submitting the claim to secondary or tertiary payer. There are some variations in this standard. We use 837P for professional claims, which is equivalent to our CMS 1500 and 837I for institutional claims, which is equivalent to UB04. All right, so this concludes our session. Thank you for watching. If you want any particular topic to be covered from medical billing, leave your comments. We'll see you with another topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.